Hey everyone, I've got some big news to cover for Workhorse Group stock investors. Unfortunately, Workhorse Group shareholders have seen their stock price fall nearly 99% off its highs. So in this video, I'm going to go over what's been happening at Workhorse Group throughout 2023. Then I'm going to look at that latest news that's come out of Workhorse Group, several items of news that have significance for Workhorse Group investors. And then I'll kind of discuss what that could mean for shareholders. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. So let's jump right in looking at the bigger picture, what's been happening at Workhorse Group, seeing some of the causes of the stock price decline starting with in May 2023 Workhorse Group told investors to expect revenue between 75 million and 125 million for the year 2023 investors not thrilled with that guidance but they took it and they said all right midpoint of 100 million all right we understand but the bad news came in later in the year when around June, Workhorse Group lowered that revenue target for 2023 down to a range of 65 million to 85 million. So the midpoint fell to 75 million in revenue for 2023, down from the initial guidance of just a few months ago of 100 million at the midpoint. So a near 25% decrease for the annual target revenue range. Of course, that's not good news for Workhorse Group stock investors who are expecting more revenue, who are expecting the company to ramp up sales and deliveries more extensively throughout the year. And the cause for this downgrade, Workhorse said several causes here, they note here, but the one thing that really stands out to me is that General industry level charging infrastructure concerns impacting adoption rates. And I wanted to talk a little bit more about that. And that's really what's the major constraint here in the transition from this, not only from the battery, battery electric vans for workhorse, but also battery electric cars and battery electric trucks, the infrastructure is just not there to support the speed at which companies are trying to ramp up production and trying to ramp up sales. That infrastructure, the charging in infrastructure is not there. Moreover, the inconvenience factor is huge. You can fill up, you can fuel up your car or van or truck in much less time than you can fuel up or charge using battery electric technology. And so that constraint is really holding back the industry and workhorse group here saying, you know what, that's really holding us back. The fact that there, the infrastructure is just not there. And so if that's not there, the clients that workhorse is trying to sell their vans to, or their small trucks to come back and say, look, we would love to transition because we're getting forced to by government agencies, but the infrastructure just isn't there. How are we going to, we can't operate the way we're used to operating with these changing conditions. If we have to spend so much time charging these vans, charging these trucks, it's going to decrease the amount of deliveries we can make in a day. And so it's going to really hurt our operations and it's going to add to our costs and we're not willing to absorb that just yet. So here's the target of the type of markets that Workhorse is targeting. You've got buses, local delivery vans, service utility trucks, last mile delivery, local delivery, local delivery step van, box truck, and a local reefer truck. Overall, they are not targeting the long haul market. They're going with the short haul Two, you could think 200 miles or less of range is the area that workhorse is trying to target in the commercial delivery market. And the big thing to remember from this is that it's a tiny segment of the market. The total addressable market is just $15 billion, which 
Looking at the grand scheme of things, a total addressable market for a company of just 15 billion is tiny. That's tiny. That's on the smaller end of total addressable markets that you can have. For instance, the advertising industry is a total addressable market of over 900 billion. The home improvement industry, total addressable market of over 900 billion. And so you've got this company that's targeting a total addressable market of just 15 billion, which leaves a smaller upside. And if you're in thinking about investing in a stock like Workhorse that comes with a lot of risk, you at least want to have that massive upside in case things work out. You want to get that benefit from taking a big risk in a company that's losing so much money on the bottom line and having difficult time ramping up production, ramping up sales. You want to have that upside. So if they do get things right, you want to make a big score to compensate you for the big risk that you're taking. Workhorse updated investors with their production portfolio. And this is the area to focus on because this is the one we had news that I'm going to share with you a little bit later in the video. The W56, which is a class 5, 6, 10,000 pound payload, 150 mile range uh, van, delivery van that's on track for production in the third quarter of 2023. And they got two orders received for this uh, W56 and they're expecting to make deliveries in the fourth quarter. So we had an update on this in the latest news I'm going to share with you a little bit later in the video. So they were planning to get production for W56 in the third quarter. Keep this in mind. So another big item for Workhorse is their cash balance, six, just $62.4 million in cash. And the major reason why this is a concern, you look here, their cash balance as of December 2022, they had $99 million in cash. That fell to $62 million in June. So they went through $37 million in about six months. So this $62 million won't last very long. And they took measures to address this issue as well, which I will also talk about in the latest news. But I wanted to show you this so that you can understand the context behind why the company took the steps they did. Management highlighted their third quarter priorities uh, execute product roadmaps, profitably grow the CV sales, the aerospace progress. But the thing I wanted to highlight here is to secure fourth quarter 2023 and 2024 customer orders. And that's it for me. Like if I'm a workhorse group or workhorse stock investor, this is what I'm looking at. I want to see customer orders. I want to see orders. I want to see sales. I want to see contracts. I want to see deals with major companies so that I can feel good about this company ramping up production because they're ramping up production. And as I so showed you in the previous slide, inventories are increasing because the company's not selling the, the products they're producing yet. So they're producing without having sales intact. These are not sales that have already been secured. I would like to see more customer orders. I would like to see more announcements from Workhorse about customer orders in the third quarter. Okay, so let's go to the latest items. Starting with the company on September 1st got approval. Stockholders voted to approve the proposal to increase the number of shares Workhorse of Workhorse Common Stock at a special meeting of stockholders. Well, why is this important, you ask? This is how they're going to raise money. I showed you that they only had $63 million left. Well, they needed to address that issue and they did by getting approval to sell more stock. So they're going to sell more shares of the company's stock. That's going to bring in cash, but that's going to dilute shareholders. And let me show you the impact of that. So here I have the number of weighted average diluted shares outstanding for Workhorse Group. So around January 2021, they had about 150 million shares outstanding. And as of the latest update, they had 185 million. So they've added about 35 million shares in about two years, which is about 30% shareholder dilution. Not too bad when you're thinking about a company that's really just getting off the ground. But with this new authorization, there's going to be even more shares outstanding. That's going to dilute shareholders. And if or when the company ever becomes profitable, those profits are going to be split among more 
shares. So the earnings per share, the earnings per share potential decreases with increasing share count. Okay. The other big note of news came on September 7th when Workhorse announced that it began production of W56 chassis. Chassis. Remember in the slides I showed you they wanted to begin production of the vehicle. They've only just begun producing the chassis for the W56 electric vehicle at the company's Indiana manufacturing facility. So given that they're just now producing the chassis, it looks like they're going to delay those fourth quarter deliveries because September 7th, the fourth quarter is already starting in October. The third quarter ends, I believe, September 30th for Workhorse. And so I don't know if that's enough time for the company to ramp up production of the entire vehicle. That remains to be seen, but it looks like they're behind schedule again on the W56. So not good news for Workhorse stock. And already, I mean, you can see this stock price chart going back to January of 2021. It's down 99.06% in that time. It's nearly lost all of its value in the last couple of years. And this is partly because of being behind schedule, delays, and making promises, breaking promises, giving revenue targets, lowering revenue targets, and so on and so on, losing trust with investors. However, it's not all bad news for Workhorse. The company, in the latest update on September 12th, Workhorse customers are now eligible to receive up to a <clears throat> excuse me 40,000 credit for deliveries of all workhorse vehicles in 2023 and beyond. So they got the IRS approval to offer this commercial clean vehicle credit and that's huge. That's a big positive news for workhorse who desperately needed some good news. This will make purchasing their uh, electric delivery vehicles cheaper for clients which will make the sale more likely because now they can get the forty thousand dollar credit and so whatever the purchase price is they can essentially cut forty thousand from that and feel like they're getting a better deal by purchasing workhorse group vehicles so a lot of news coming out of workhorse group in september it's not all bad news it's not all bad news for the company it is making progress it did get this big update positive with the IRS approval for the commercial clean vehicle credit. So that was good news. So let's stay tuned investors to see if Workhorse Group can make some updates and tell investors, hey, we secured sales, 40 customer orders or 50 customer orders. That's really what we should be looking for as Workhorse Group investors and those interested in Workhorse Group stock. But before I let you go, if you gained any value from this video, which you probably did if you made it this far, please subscribe to the channel. It'll help me make more videos just like this one. Thank you so much for watching.